Hi again. Today I want to take a look at three trends in the periodic table. Ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. Let's begin with ionization energy. First of all, it's definition. Ionization energy is the energy required to remove one electron from an atom in the gaseous state. I can write this out as a chemical equation. Here, X, and notice that it's in gas form, requires energy to produce the X plus ion. It's important to emphasize here that things are in the gaseous state and that energy is a requirement. It's on the reactant side. Here we can see the trend. First off, moving from left to right across any period, we see an increase in the ionization energy. That indicates there's more effort required to remove an electron. The reason that happens is the effective nuclear charge increases. Let's review what that means. For instance, if I take sodium, Sodium possesses 11 protons. Its 11 electrons have the configuration shown here. The 3s electron is the valence electron. Therefore, the inner electrons, or the shielding electrons, there's 10 of them. So 11 protons minus the 10 shielding electrons gives me an effective nuclear charge of 1 plus. Moving across to chlorine that's in the same period, chlorine has 17 protons. Its configuration shows that it has exactly the same number of inner level electrons. The 3s2 and the 3p5, those are the valence electrons. So we see here a 7 plus charge for the effective nuclear charge. As we move across the period then, because the effective nuclear charge increases, so does the ionization energy. As we move down a period, we'll see also a change in, electro in ionization energy. The additional electron energy levels that are added move the electron further from the nucleus. This results in a weakening of the attraction and a drop in the ionization energy. Electron affinity is the energy released when a neutral atom gains an electron, and again it's in the gaseous state. Here you'll see the equation. Notice that energy is on the other side of the equation. Energy here is a product. That results in this plot graph you'll notice here the negative values. Negative values are the way that a chemist essentially communicates that energy is released as opposed to absorbed. You might recall in our previous example for ionization energy, energy was absorbed or required to make the reaction happen. In the case of electron affinity, energy is released. But again, we see an in same sort of pattern. As we move from left to right across any given period, due to the increase in the effective nuclear charge, there's more energy released as the electron moves in towards the nucleus. There's a couple of gaps though you'll see. In groups 2 and groups 18, you'll notice that they don't have any electron affinity. This occurs because these atoms actually have positive values, meaning they require energy and are often left off the table. The trend within groups is not particularly well defined, so as a result simply we'll say here it varies across a group as you move down the periodic table. The final trend to address is electronegativity. Electronegativity is a measurement of the attraction that an atom has for the shared pair of electrons in a covalent bond. To look at this, let's go back to something you may have come across in grade 10, and if not, you'll see it certainly in chapter or unit four videos. I've identified here what a water molecule looks like in terms of its electron arrangement. I circled the shared pair of electrons. What electro negativity measures is the attraction for those electrons that are highlighted here in blue. Electronegativity doesn't have units. Linus Pauling essentially coined what electronegativity was and he arbitrarily has given fluorine a value of 4 and everything else is less than that. Again we'll notice a similar pattern moving across the table. We'll see increases in the attraction for the electrons in a shared pair. Again, that happens because of an increase in the effective nuclear charge. More protons in the nucleus constitute a greater pull on the electrons. Moving down a family due to increased energy levels, we see that the distance from the nucleus is increasing. This weakens the attraction for the shared pair of electrons. And finally then, to summarize, if we take a look at a periodic table in whole, our non-metals up in the right and our metals down in the lower left-hand corner, Metals have a tendency to lose electrons because they have very low ionization energies and don't hold on to their electrons particularly tightly. 
Non-metals, on the other hand, in the upper right-hand corner, they have a tendency to gain electrons. That's because they have high negative electron affinity values. Now, in this series of programs, I didn't address the trend in melting points. I'm going to leave that for a video later when we take a look at bonding. So, comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching.